Hi guys, Adam here. Thanks for joining me. So what we're going to be doing today is talking about the new brush cutter, Steel 260C. Absolute beast of a thing. Uh, we're going to go through a little bit of the um, intricacies around it, how to get it started, um, what needs to keep it running. We'll talk about the head, we'll talk about some of the blades that go on it, and the bits and pieces that go with the purchase of this new brush cutter. So this you'll see is a follow-on from the last video that came up was around the brush cutter Ryobi. Uh, it was a 52cc piece of shit. Um, had to return it twice now. Went away, uh, gave it back, got my money back and purchased this. A lot more money, but definitely worth it. Let's take a look. Okay guys, let's get the specifics out of the way. So first of all, we'll go through what it can do. Um, we'll go through some of the specifications of it. We'll then talk about some of the cool little uh, implementations on this compared to some of the older model 2060s. Uh, we'll talk about the fuel, we'll talk about the head and some of the other attachments that go on it. So let's get into it. First of all, as I said, FS2060C, uh, which is the newer model. It's got a 41cc engine. Uh, two kilowatt output on it, so it's on the very much on the higher end of what these uh, brush cutters can do. Some of the things aren't too interesting to me, but I'll read them out anyway. Uh, max revs, 9,000 revs per minute, uh, and it holds 750 mil of uh, fuel. So it's two stroke, not a four stroke, so you don't have to put oil in separately. I've spoken about two stroke before. Uh, it's a pretty easy thing to do. Get yourself one of those little bottles where you can mix it quite simply. Usually you use a five litre container. Don't use anything bigger than five litres unless you're going to be using it nearly every day because you don't want your fuel to go, fuel to go stale. So that's one of the little tips. Uh, it's got a 42 mil bore, which is the end here. So that's really important to know what type of attachments you can put on the end of it. Because if you buy the wrong diameter bore, you're not going to be able to fit it on. So still they supply uh, different diameter um, bore heads. They also supply the different attachments on it. So if in doubt, if you buy something like this from steel, go back to your dealership and get yourself the attachments on the end. That way you'll never go wrong. Okay, nothing else too interesting in there. Tells you about maintenance schedule and whatnot, but we'll leave that at the moment. So a couple of little things about it. First of all, We'll bring you in a bit closer. So, first thing we've got now, if you're in either a really hot climate or cold climate, there's actually a um, adjuster on here, so you can adjust it depending on the climate you're in. As I said, 750 mil container for your fuel, two stroke. Uh, we've got a couple of things here, depending on your adjustments, if you ever wanna play around with them, I'll spin that out of the way so you can see outlet uh, and primer is at the top here which you can't see at the moment around the other side okay so around here we've got our choke for starting it now really simple same as the chainsaws if you follow this it'll start first go every time if you don't follow these instructions you're going to struggle so for this one you actually push in it's got a black clip around there you push it in and you go down to full choke Pull it, you pull it maybe two, three times until you actually hear it turn over. Once you've hear, heard it turn over once, stop, bring yourself to half choke, and then pull it again until it starts. And then what you'll do is when you put the push the accelerator on, once you've let it run for a couple of minutes, then it'll go to normal start. If you do that, you'll be fine. If you don't do it that way, if you leave it down there and you keep pulling, keep pulling thinking it's going to actually start what you'll do is you'll flood the engine so be really careful with that some of the other things uh, we'll check under the hood now so under here is our where our spark plug sits so let's undo him uh, not spark plug uh, air filter sorry There's your air filter, so give that a clean out every now and then. Once you've used it a bit, uh, that'll get filled up and you want to make sure you have some nice clean air coming in through there. 
very simple. Uh, if you look after your equipment, it'll look after you. So that's one of the simple things that you don't have to do it every time you use it, but often enough, you look after it. And if you're not doing it very often, they're one of the things that you'll start hearing the engine starting to struggle, and that'll be because of that. Up the top here, we've got our spark plug. All really easy to get to, so in terms of servicing this, very, very simple. Don't need to worry about uh, taking off everything to try and get to all your bits and pieces. That one comes off pretty easy. And there's your spark plug. So what it came with is one of these, very usual uh, tool that you get with these types of um, bits of equipment. So it has the actual spark plug removed on the end there. So I said, very, very simple. Um, nice little compartment there for your spark plug to get in and out of. So again, that's saying that if you feel like it's struggling, if it's not firing uh, as you turn it on, it might be time to replace the spark plug. Okay, in terms of the handle, very, very simple. So this, to release it, until it pops up, spin it around and then we tighten it back up again so a good way to store it is like that and then again so that spins it the right way around we undo it again and put the handlebars how you like it so when you get this you'll set it up and you'll have it in the right position for you Again, nice and simple.
that worked pretty well. The only thing is halfway through it, I need to fuel up, and that was just because I only used the fuel that it came with when I purchased it, so I didn't actually fuel it up before I started it. Other than that, it cut it really well. Uh, it's done a great job. Uh, the line was really strong, so hitting some of the um, beams around the retaining wall there ate into it a little bit but didn't just destroy it straight off the bat which was really pleasing to see. Overall really good piece of equipment. Next thing I'm going to tackle is some of the more stronger thicker bits so I might go after some trees with some of the blades that we've got but we'll see that next time. Hope you've enjoyed that guys.